Alrighty, welcome back to So You Want to Play Japan and How to Play Japan in Admiral's Edition. Um, we're still on episode four, technically. This is going to be part five or six. I don't remember without without looking. But we are going to we are going to cover Korea, Manchuria, the Soviet garrison, the the Soviets, and that. So basically, what it is: Korea and Manchuria, all of this area here, is conquered ter territory by Japan. Um, they have a non-aggression pact with the Soviets, which keeps them at war. But the Soviets do break it in '45 and cross the borders. And they will break it earlier if you let them. If you go into your intelligence screen, you have a Manchuko garrison. Turn one, you start at 11,000 plus out of 8,000. As long as you have 8,000 assault strength or higher in Korea and, and Man, Man, Manchuko, the Soviets will not cross the border early. If you dip below that, even by one point, there's a chance every turn they activate and attack. So if it's close to their activation date in 45, you may not care. If it's, you know, 1941 or 1942, you sure as hell don't want them crawl, coming over the border because you, you, you can't handle them in China and everything else going on. You just can't. Now what it is, depending on what house rules you have set up for your game, if you, if you have house rules, the nice thing about the garrison here, as you saw, it was 11,500 basically out of 8,000. You have 3,500 assault value. That's almost five divisions of troops you could send somewhere else without worrying about the Soviets act activating. Basically, what, you, what you'll do, if you're playing with no house rules, as in you can move troops freely, you will be sending all these troops into, into China. Because you can move them into China without doing anything to them along the rail lines. And there's some nice rails here, see, all the way into China. If you are playing with the house rule, we have to spend political points to move units out of, out of to cross national bo bo borders. You have to buy these units out. And that will take a lot of political points and a lot of, lot of time. Which, that's, most people play with that rule. Otherwise, you know, you, you just gave... Four, you just gave what eight more divisions to to China. That's a lot. So basically, what it is, you normally have to buy them out. I recommend buying them out to a non-restricted headquarters. Technically, you could buy them out to a Chinese headquarters if you want to, or any of the non-restricted to obey that rule. But I prefer buying out to like Southern Army, something like that, because then if I decide to, for some reason. Say I take all of all of all of China and I and I bought them out to the Chinese headquarters. Well, now if I want to use them in Burma or anywhere else anywhere else on the map, I have to buy them out again. So you buy them out to an unrestricted headquarters. You buy them out once, then now they're able to be air air airlifted, go on ships, whatever you want. If you move them to another restricted one like China, they still cannot. So in so you have all these troops here. You want to go through. You want to, the first few days of the war, you want to be moving troops, put them into strap modes, and move them into one or two nice staging areas. Um, you want to make sure you leave enough because there's a lot of garrisons up here in, in, in Manchuria. There's some in Korea as well. You don't want to lose the garrisons, so you leave, you leave them all, all garrisoned. You want to combine all your aircraft into a couple bases. I use the bases of... Mukden, Changchung, and Harbin as my main staging air areas. All the Manchurian air aircraft will go at one of those three bases. I do pretty much transports and recon planes will go to to Mukden. All the bombers go to Changchung. All the fighters go to Har Harbin. The reason I do that is Harbin has industry. It just makes sense to have fighters there. And I leave the fighters there most of the war. That is my fighter training my, uh, my Imperial Japanese Army fighter training air area. You'll get eight or ten fighter units up here, and you'll sit here and train pilots through the entire war. That's all they'll do. Now, at some point in the war, in late 44, 45, you might actually start needing them. But other than that, you want to churn out pi pilots every three to four four months to move to other units. But that's a whole other video. So you move all your all your planes to those three bases is what I do. Now at first these bases, 
don't have enough AV support for them all. It doesn't matter. They're just going to sit there in, 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 in training mode. So it doesn't matter. Most of them will, will fly over or come by rail. So, I mean, they will get there eventually. And then you go through and you move all the units off a lot of these bases that don't need garrisons. Move them down to those three bases. Well, I put most of them at, at, at Chung Chang. Chang Chung, sorry. Um, and then the ones I know that I'm sending into China, I send over to Chin Chow. Although you could send them all the way over here to Johor if you want, because that's still in Manchuria. But it's also probably about a day's travel west by by rail. Then what you do, you will assemble all the Manchurian tank units. And there's a bunch. Um, between that and China, you'll get yeah, around 500 assault value of, of tanks. You'll get several units that are size 80 assault, a bunch in like the 50s, and a few smaller ones. You do not want to worry about assembling divisions in in Man Manchuria. If they have an intrinsic tank unit that's outside already, you want those tanks going to China because you need them there. So you'll move them west. Even if you don't buy them out on turn one, move them to Johor or Chinchao, whatever base you want to use as your staging area. Basically what that is, everything you move there will be bought out at some point to go over to to go over in, into, in, into, into, into China. Once you, the first things you want to buy out are the tanks. Those are the most useful at first. And then you probably want to buy out all the artillery. Manchuria has huge artillery units, lots of guns, and, it, and when they're massed up at uh, enemy units, like when you're taking bases, they can be, you know, the artillery themselves will do three, 400 casualties a a, a turn, especially in, in like clear, clear, clear terrain. So I want to move a bunch of those over. When you start running out of uh, artillery, then you can buy out actual d divisions. And Manchuria had a couple nice ones. There's an 80 experience division sitting in Man Man Manchuria. I believe there's a couple other high ones, you know. So you want to buy them out. You can also buy out a bunch of the base forces, get them over in China, because China has a lack of engineers and, and AV support. You can also buy out all the bombers out of out of Manchuria if you want. Some of the transport planes if you really wanted to. And the recon. Recon probably not a bad idea. Transport, yeah, I probably wouldn't. The bombers definitely want to buy them out of buy, them out, buy those out at some point as well. So you you know, so there's a lot of units here that you think are trapped and are pointless, but you buy them out, send them somewhere else. That increases your offensive ability somewhere else. Now, it might take you months to get all these units out of here, and it probably will, and that's fine. China is not going to be over in, in a couple months. Six months in China, you're, you'll be lucky if you've, if you've taken the rail. You still have half of China to go. So China's huge. It'll be there for a year or more. So Manchuria is just, a, just another slot to feed troops into China, whether it costs you political points or not. That depends on your house rules. By Normal game rules, if you're on a restricted head, a headquarters unit, you cannot board a plane. I mean, I'm sorry, you cannot board a boat. You can only be transported by plane to another base of the same headquarters. Other than that, you, you, you could walk anywhere. You could walk all the way from Manchuria all the way into India if you wanted to for these units without any kind of house, house rules. But that's the same with Indian troops marching all the way back, too. So, but Manchuria is not, I mean, there's not a whole, Manchuria never has any a action. I've never got to a game in my, that I've played where Soviets have activated. Um, so I've never had to worry about that. Um, there are bases here you want to build up. I mentioned the main three ones. You want to build those up, the airfields, the size, whatever, max size, you know, size nine, if you can make them there. And then you want to build forts. Um. Some of these, like Port Arthur, you'll build the port up. Some of these other ones down here, you'll build the port and the airfields up. Basically, because you can always use larger ports, and two, they're worth points. The larger the port port and airfield, the more points the base is worth. And then if you have all these interior ones, you're, you'll build airfields up to a certain point, and then you'll build forts. The ones on the border with Russia, you'll want to definitely build forts. Whether you want to build the airfields up or not, that's going to be up to you. But 
There's not a lot, ton to do in this area. There are a bunch of resources you'll be drawing out. Um, you could, if you're not going to do the Magic Rail, which I'll talk about in another video, you could pull resources from Port Arthur. It's a good, nice size port. Starts by size nine. You can't build it any any, any larger in game. Um, you can even take them out of out of out of, out of Kijo, the capital of, of Korea at this point. Or, or, or Fusan, which is not a very big port, but you can definitely double the size of the port during the game. And then that's pretty much it for this area of the world. Um, like I said, there's no real strategy. You already own it all. There's no real offense or attack going on here unless somehow you've activated uh, the, the, the Soviets. And if it's not like t in somewhere in 45, that's a big mistake. You're blinding, you're going to get crushed. At first, you might look at the Soviet Union and say, oh, they're, they're not that tough. They get a lot of tanks and big tanks. And as I mentioned in my last video, tanks will crush uh, Japanese troops. We just, they just don't have much anti-armor ability built into the units. Very few anti-tank guns units and very few tank units in, 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 uh, in, a, in, in general. One thing Manchuria does get during the war um, as time goes on, they get reinforcements as well, just like China and everywhere else. They will get some large tank units, like divisional tank units for armor. You're going to want to buy those out. Don't let them upgrade. Do not replace units. Do not upgrade them. Do not fill those units out. The price you pay in political points is based on the number of devices. Either that or the assault value. So if you fill these out with with you know, say they come in at, at, at half strength, and you fill them all the way up to to full strength. You're 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 paying double for that unit now than what you were before. Buy them out, and then let them fill 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 out. But that's what it is. Um, by combining all the air force into three bases, you minimize how much base uh base forces and AV support you'll need. Once you get them up to size eight, that doubles. You can move a lot of your base forces into China, where you need the engineers and the AV support to continue the the the, the push towards the interior. Um, you also want to send some of the construction units here to different bases and start building all these bases up. The ones on the southern tip of China, of Korea, are very important for late war, because as the as the Allies come up, they almost always end up coming up through Philippines, Formosa, through Okinawa, and then up to the west coast of Japan. All these bases here can come into play, especially ones that cannot be bombarded with their, you know, plethora of battleships. So these interior ones, build those air, air, air build, build, build those airfields up to high as you can go, and build the forts up. And that'll give you areas you, you can base your land-based bombers, your naval torpedo bombers. You know, hey, you've lost all your carriers. Well, buy the air groups back. The carriers are only mobile air airfields. That's their only ad, ad, advantage. The aircraft is 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 the weapon on on the uh, carriers. So you, if you lose a carrier and, and the air you know air groups are destroyed, buy them back as soon as you can. You want those, either for training groups or just for you know you want them. You want as many air air groups as as you can. But that that's for this video. It's much shorter than the other ones because there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um. If you like the video, please go ahead and give me a like. If you like the series continuing here, uh, go ahead and, and, and subscribe. And I'll be back in a while with, another, with some more videos on this topic. Until then, you guys have yourself a great day, and we'll see you later.